G'day guys, it's Ben again here to bring you another video and this one is going to be looking at making an Osborg type Viking sea chest. So these things are absolutely awesome for anyone involved in medieval reenactment. Uh, these things tend to date roughly from, uh, I think the earliest known ones go back to the Osborg graves. Um, there are indications on artwork and in text to suggest they go back further than that and it's highly highly likely that they did and um, these are really good I use one for pretty much every member of my family um, so we each have a chest that stores all of our medieval gear in it that way everything's together it's not lying around loose all over the place and then you know you get uh, an invite to a, uh, uh, some sort of medieval festival or an event and you're looking for particular gear and I don't know where it is so I don't want to have that problem what I want to do is keep everything nice and tidy together um, especially my kids only do sort of three or four events a year so for them it's it's a bit hard um, whereas myself I'm doing stuff all the time uh, and I really enjoy it and I love it so having one of these chests is a, is a really really good thing to do okay so to make one of these okay the chest that I'm gonna make in this particular video is gonna take several days I'm using pine uh, realistically they were they would have used oak I'm gonna use modern power tools obviously they didn't have those kind of luxuries back in the day um, so that's not necessarily um, historic this is not a historically accurate one and the measurements that I'm using are simply uh, I guess made up by me to suit my particular needs, not necessarily to suit um, a, an actual realistic, historically accurate example. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is go and grab some pine from a hardware store or some kind of wood supply store. Uh, in my case, in Australia we use Bunnings uh, and let's take a look. Alrighty guys, so I've gone down to Bunnings, I've sourced some, some wood. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is put uh, the wood together to make wider pieces. Now I understand this may not be made the same way that you guys make it. I'm making them the way that I make it. Uh, and I found this to be very successful and it works really, really well. I like simple. Simple works for me. It may not work for you. I understand that and that's okay. This is not a historically accurate chest as I said before. Mine's made from pine and with power tools. So um, I, I get it guys, lots of people do different things different ways, that's okay. Um, but this is simply trying to make something which for most people is far more affordable and far more reasonable and practical because we all live very busy lives and we all you know, have financial pressures. So working this way works for me. Um, and the first stage, as I said, is to put some pieces of wood together to make uh, wider pieces of wood. All right, so. So I've got two here which are 23 and a half centimetres wide, I'm not exactly sure what that is in inches and I'm simply going to butt join these together um, and clamp them into place as I say to make wider pieces and this is going to be the front uh, and this is going to be the two if you like um, shorter ends so if, if you've got the longer ends being the sides then the shorter ends are the um, if you like the front and the back Okay, um, the glue that I'm going to use is Sikaflex and then I'm simply going to clamp in place. Once I've got these done, then we're going to measure, draw down um, and cut the individual pieces out. We're going to be doing that, to, uh, I'll leave this to dry for at least a day. Uh, so that's all going to be a, a, a tomorrow job. The assembly, which will take place um, essentially two days time, is a fairly quick process once you've got everything marked out, done and cut. Um, so we'll go through all of those different things individually. When you're buying wood, look for wood with the least amount of imperfections. You'll know what, you'll know what that is when you see it. Uh, look for the wood that you think looks the best for you, for your needs, for your, your purposes. Um, whether you like a lot of grain, whether you like features in the grain, or, or you're not. It doesn't really make super duper differences at the end of the day the box is there to hold stuff I, I'm a very functional person um, if you look at examples of this stuff um, and you can see lots of them uh, it's both in terms of archaeological finds and reproductions that people have made through the years then you'll see that these things are a work of art 
There's no other word for it. These things are just a magnificent work of art. Personally, um, I don't really get too much involved in the whole uh, side of the um, carvings and all the rest of it. It's not really something that gets to me too much. Not at this stage anyway. I can come back and do that kind of stuff later. But for the moment, uh, all we're doing is just making the chest itself. So this chest will be something that suits you and your needs and this particular chest suits me and my needs. So as we can see, Sikaflex, this is a, a waterproof glue but it's a, um, a, a water-based adhesive which I used for a lot of my gear. Uh, not that expensive, uh, I find it works super duper well. This is now step one complete. So we have enough wood here for two sides, two ends. Uh, there's also obviously going to be a top and a base. We'll get to that a little bit later as we go through. Otherwise, um, I'm just going to leave this in place for roughly 24 hours to dry and cure. All right, let's check back soon. All right, we now have the two short ends completely marked out. 24 hours has elapsed. We've got the gluing all done. Everything's really, really nice. So I'm going to show you how I've got everything marked out. Not exactly sure um, how well this is going to come out with the pencil lines on the wood, but here we go. It is 44 centimeters tall and 44 wide. Radio, we've come in six centimeters here to create a nice angle. Ready? Four centimeters up at the base with 10 and then 15 centimeters. This will create a nice carry handle, and we've going to cut in a section here to allow for the longer sides to attach sort of nicely into that and then pretty much what's going to happen is the base will sit approximately here so this will all come together really well and I've marked out the two and um, there we've got, well, we got the two the two clones and before you do any kind of um, power tool work it's really important to make sure that you're using the correct PPE, it's going to be a bit noisy and make sure you've got um, correct glasses on otherwise you're going to injure yourself and, and nobody really needs that. Radio, okay, let's get into it. So we now have the two front pieces uh, cut. First thing you want to do is just to make sure that they're both absolute clones of each other and they fit together nicely. Then all I've really got to do is just a bit of sanding down and just a little bit of finishing off on this and this is going to be pretty good to go. Um, there are a few imperfections and that's fine. Where this join is you can see there's a slight edge there by a couple of millimetres. I can take that down with a plane. I'm not a professional carpenter so my expectations of myself are, are pretty reasonable. Um, and then as this goes together we'll be smoothing out the sides to make it work really well. Okay so the next thing is the two long sides. Uh, already. So on this side we've got uh, 50 centimetres along the top, a total of 68 on the bottom but I'm taking off these two sections to allow for the, uh, the joining of the two short ends. And the total height is 36 centimeters. Uh, already, let's crack on. 
Basically the way these two are going to work, if we put these like this, and they just slot in like so. It's so a real simple, real nice. And I just need to tidy up a little bit of the cutting and they'll be good to go. The chest is now essentially built as such. I've still got to put the lid actually on, but all of the sides are now together as you can see. And the base is in place. This is a really strong design. And I'm just going through a process now, smoothing everything out. Before I actually put the lid on, I'm just gonna run a route around it, uh, just to give it that really nice smooth edge and no one's getting any splinters. So we now have a completed Viking chest. In the second of these videos, what we're going to do is we're going to carve it. So these things would have been hereditary items within the families, and they would have had incredible value. They were absolute works of art. So uh, hopefully, my kids will, will receive some of these chests in the future. Um, so I look forward to seeing you in my next video in a month or two, once that uh, is all squared away and then we'll look at the finishing of that chest uh, perhaps in a third video. We'll see how we go for time. Alrighty, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and share and I'll catch you in my next video.